I always love videos when there's dogs in the background. Yeah, no, kind of that. <laughs> you know, Oliver Anthony, when he first put out his, his first videos and the dogs are just chilling. <laughs> I love that, man. It's so wholesome. Right. <clears throat> so we're outside here with your tanks and your rainwater collection system. And this is, uh, for all the systems that, that we see, this is the most impressive rainwater collection system that, that I have seen. And, you, you know, I love it. You've got two 25-gallon tanks, 2,500-gallon tanks here. And when I asked him, why put in two 2,500-gallon tanks? His response was, because I didn't have room for three. And, you know, this goes back to the core of what we talked about. Water is essential. You can get away with a whole lot of stuff, but, but no water is not okay. And again, the average household, I don't think, has any idea how much water we actually consume and waste on, on a daily basis. And so kind of walk us through um, what, what you did here. I mean, sure. the, the obvious, you've got <clears throat> gutters on yep. the front and the back of the house. Yep. Right? So I'll start with just the roof. We've got um, this square footage. We can collect approximately 700 gallons for every inch of rain that we collect or every inch of rain we get. Um, you know, again, going back to what you said, how critical rain wa or water is in general. So, you know, here guys in the military say all the time, two is one, one is none. If redundancy is a wonderful thing. If I could fit a third tank here, if I could fit 10,000 gallon tanks here, we would have done that. But <clears throat> this was the absolute biggest we've mm -hmm. got. They're both completely full right now. And even now I'm like, man, if we could just put a thousand gallon tank right here, <laughs> something so that, cause right now we've got, these are the overflows. Um, and you've got water coming out that we're just wasting. It's going to the ground, which is fine. But man, if we could capture that too, so that come summertime right. in July, it's not unusual to go 60 days here without rain sometimes. Right. So you do that. And then all of a sudden you'll get like four to six inches in a week. Yeah. And it catches up real fast. Right. So you've got to be able to collect a lot and you got to be able to hold a lot. Right. Um, so we've got <clears throat> gutters on the front and the back. Real simple gutter design. I told them, I said, don't even have to put the downspouts. Just run the gutter. Um, those gutters do have a leaf guard over top. Um, I forgot the name of it. There's a million of them out there. Mm -hmm. You know, look at your area and what's, and what's good for you guys. Um, I like the screen style just because it keeps out debris. I have seen some leaves still get into the other kinds, right. but again, we've got some redundancy here. So I can snap it off and get it out of there. So this is what's sitting on top of this leaf guard right here. And so you can see, even though I've got the screen on top of my gutters, all of this debris was still getting through there right. and that would have gone into our tanks. So you've got to have containment and you've got to be able to, you have to enclose your entire water system from one end to the other. It's got to be sealed off. And when I say sealed, you've got to have some kind of a wire mesh, mesh to keep bugs, snakes, mm -hmm. ro um, frogs, lizards, whatever else, all the critters, you've got to keep all that out of there, but you've also got to keep that debris out. So that is the first and second step. We've got <clears throat> caps over the gutters, then you've got the leaf guard. And, and this is something, just adding to that, that's common that we see with a lot of people doing a halfway rain collection system using IBC totes or, or uh, something a little smaller than this. The number one thing that they fight is mosquitoes. And mm. if you don't have screens like this, mosquitoes will come down and they will put larvae in your tank every time. And you'd be shocked at the number of rainwater collection systems that I've walked out. You got near that tank and you got eaten alive. Really? because they are just flowing in and out, you know? And so super, super important to not only have that, the debris not get in there, but hold mosquitoes out of there. Yeah, you gotta keep the bugs out. Gotta You've gotta have screens. <clears throat> we'll look at the overflow later on. And same thing there, It's it's got a screen on it. It's a stainless steel wire mesh. You're not getting bugs in there. You're not getting critters. So, you know, we know this is safe. We know it's clean. Yeah. So, um, you know, I don't know how many layers of filtration and screening we've got here but number one number two this is number three so this is a um what's what's the word for this um oh, blank on you. I, it'll come um, to me um first flush sorry um so this is a first flush system um so what's important in that that he's going to go through is there's while we've got screens here that are going to catch all the big debris and keep keep water out what it's not going to do is keep the pollen keep the small d debris keep 
any chemicals like yeah. you had mentioned that have washed down onto the roof, any of that stuff that's there, that would go into your tank. And so essentially this is going to take the first part of the rain coming off of this roof and dispose of it automatically for you. And so kind of walk through. Yeah. So inside here, and you can see our whole system is actually three inch piping. I stepped this up to four inch just to have a little more capacity. And basically what it means is I'm going to wash off a little bit more of my roof that I'm going to capture that. So when it first starts raining, um, it's going to wash off any dust, debris, pollen, any of that kind of stuff, that's what's going to get washed off. And that initial wash off is going to go into this tank right here. And then <clears throat> at the bottom, you've got a screen filter and you can see what it's, it's already been working. This has only been installed for a couple months. Um, and this dust and dirt that you're getting in here, that's what it's capturing. And then you've got a slow release um, orifice inside here. It comes with four different sizes, mm -hmm. rubber orifices. Um, and that way it's a very very slow drain so you got 700 gallons coming in here at an hour from just one inch of rain per hour um, so what essentially happens on that too explaining us through there's there's a coupler up here a seat that this ball will sit into yep. so what's going to happen is that water's going to flow down it's going to drop first <clears throat> down into this tube before it goes to the tank and so when it hits that it's got a very very small hole this this ball is down at the bottom it's floating it's got a very, very small hole in the bottom of this that's letting water weep out. So as that rain comes, this is going to begin to fill with that first bit of water, the first flush. And so as this ball comes all the way up, when this tube is filled, the ball is going to seat up there, close this pipe off, and the rest of your water is going to go over to your tank. At yep. this point, clean water will yep. go over to your tank. And so since this is constantly weeping and allowing this to drain, if you get a break in the rain for just a little bit, this ball will sink back down a little. When the rain hits again, it will take that first bit, it'll flush it out, and then it will go back up and seal again. So yep. guaranteeing that you're not getting debris, you're not getting anything dirty going into your system. Yeah, a lot of people might have some concerns about, you know, well, you're wasting a lot of water doing that. No, you, you absolutely, you want to keep that tank as mm -hmm. clean as possible. Inevitably, you're going to get some dust, debris, and whatever else inside there, no matter what you do. But man, I mean, all the stuff that you see inside yeah. there, that's not getting into my tank. And that's what I'm eliminating. Yeah. This does take a little bit of maintenance. You know, you need to you need to pull this out once in a while and you can you need to look at this and you need to rinse this out and uh, clean it. And you can you take the whole thing apart. So it's fully serviceable. Same thing there. You can see the debris that we've got inside there. You can pull that orifice, you can get all of this out, all this can be rinsed out. So, you know, you need to pull this once in a while. You need to check it, make sure that that orifice isn't clogged. It does get clogged. Mm -hmm. And when it gets clogged, you're not doing anything anymore. You're not collecting anything right. into this because it's just going to stay full of water. water up there. So and... you don't want that. So you need to pull that. Um, you need to be checking your system. So, you know, does it need to be daily? No, but, you know, maybe once a month, pull it, check it, and just see what you got going on. Make sure everything's working the way it should. Which is, a, which is a super important point. And again, I think something that people overlook. When you move off grid and you're beginning to depend on systems like this, there's always maintenance involved. Yeah. It's not, if you want no maintenance, move to a subdivision and go buy yep. water from a water company who is paying people to, to service water, to put chemicals in it, to, to do all of those things. It, when you're collecting it from something like this, you, you have to be on top of stuff like that. Yep. And so... Not, not an overwhelming amount of maintenance, but no. definitely something that you want to stay on top of. Um, now, you ordered, you just ordered these, these components online and just went to a local hardware store for your pipe? Yeah, I just bought the piping locally. <clears throat> um, we got galvanized brackets to just hold everything. Yeah. You know, part of that is it's heavy duty. Part of it is it just looks good. Yeah, um, and it was white and you painted it to yeah, match. Yeah, it's just white PVC. Yep. We just painted all of it. Yeah. Um, just wanted it to kind of blend with everything a little bit. And um, yeah, I mean, I bought the actual first flush kit, which is this section right here. Um, some of the internals, all of this down here that I just took apart for you, the ball. Um, you know, that came as one big kit. There's a few different ways that you can actually arrange it, but... This is what worked for us. You know, you talked about the um, the size of the tank earlier. This is the biggest tank we could fit back here. It's also why the, the cabin sits as high as it does. 
if you look at this horizontal piping, we've got almost no fall. I right. mean, it's just barely sloping down into the tank at all. It's enough, you know, it'll get there, right. but there's not a lot of fall, fall to it. It doesn't need a whole lot of fall, right. but you gotta have some, you can't, you know, you're not gonna flow water uphill. Right. But I mean, this is, this is as, as, as big of a tank or as tall of a tank as we could possibly fit up here. Yeah. So. No, and those are all important things to consider <clears throat> square one. Before you put your first foundation post in, before you put your first board for your structure. Yep. You know, your solar, your water. Do I need to orient this different? Do I need to raise it like you did? so that you can functionally use things like this. Yeah, all right, so. So in just, in just kind of a prelude to this, you know, one of the things that people think is we throw water into a tank and then it just flows out the bottom of the tank yep. and, and it's there. But as we talked about, the debris getting in there, all of that debris is ultimately gonna settle down at the bottom. So that would be the last water that you would wanna collect. Yep. You would wanna take what's up on top. So it's a really awesome system that he's got in here. So we've, you, you're going to have you're going to have debris at the bottom. You're also going to have debris on the surface level. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, on the surface of the water. So I'll start going back to here. Um, we've actually all of these bulkheads have female threads on the on the the outside of the tank and the inside of the tank. Um, unfortunately, you can't see it. We got too much water in there. It's just too dark. But there's actually three inch PVC that goes um, from this bulkhead all the way down to the bottom of the tank and then hits a P-trap and that directs your water so that as it falls in, you're not just stirring up all of the debris inside your tank. So that water goes down, hits the P-trap and then gets redirected back up. And that way you're not um, just stirring up anything that's sitting on the bottom or whatever. So <clears throat> that keeps anything on the bottom on the bottom. Yeah. It keeps it there. It's not getting stirred up, mixed up. You are going to get some debris that sits on top. Here's a plastic shavings from putting in bulkheads and whatever else. Some pollen may get up there. So as another level of protection, you've got a float float ball and then suspended from that is a stainless steel wire mesh grate. This is actually your intake screen. So God forbid we did get snakes, frogs, lizards, whatever inside there. You know, your water level <clears throat> is actually probably right about here. That's your water level on this float ball. And then you're probably looking at six to 10 inches here. Six to 10 inches below the water surface is where you're actually gonna be intaking your water. So what that does prevents you from picking up anything that's at the water level, but also this is your highest oxygenated level of the water right. is at the top. So just below the surface, that's the cleanest water. It's the best water for drinking and using and whatever else. And so by doing this, you've got, we've got a flexible hose that is rated for potable water. Um, but we've got a flexible hose in there and this whole thing moves. So as your water level changes, wherever that is, is where you're intaking your water. Another thing I'll add is that <clears throat> the, both of these tanks are 100% blackout. So what that means is it's not letting any sunlight into your system. So if people are using IBC tanks or mm -hmm. whatever else, you need to make sure that they're rated to be used outside. Are they gonna hold up the UV light? Um, are they gonna keep light out? And then are they actually rated for potable water? A lot of those aren't, and you don't know what those systems were or what those tanks were used for in the past, if it's drums or, whatever it may be you need to make sure that whatever chemicals or whatever else was inside there is that what you want to right. be drinking um, and one of the things that's super important with the blackout on that tank is if you get any light in there you will have algae growth yep and it will become a problem so a absolute on a blackout is super super important and there's things that you can do you can you can add a little bit of bleach to it or you can even, they make compound systems and dosing systems that you can dose in bleach once in a while. There's mm -hmm. calculations for that. But, you know, you want to avoid all those things as much as possible. And that goes back to the UV light. If we do get anything growing in here, the UV light's going to kill it. And right. If, you know, other things, the carbon filter is going to kill it. So you know, there's, there's ways to do it, but the best filtration is just elimination and prevention. Absolutely. So the other thing I'll show, and you may have to pan around here, but... <clears throat> We've got this overflow system or an overflow uh, vent right here. So on the outside, it's actually got a wire mesh uh, screen to it. 
but this is the overflow. So whenever it fills up, what it actually does is inside the tank, um, it, it comes in and, and hits a 90 degree angle. And all that does is it gives you another four to six inches of water level. And, you know, when you're trying to save water and you're trying to hold it and store it, you want as much capacity as possible. So this is a 2,600 gallon tank, but we got to have 27, 2750, maybe even 2,800 gallons inside here. So, you know, from the two, we've got 5,500 gallons of right. capacity. And right now, both of them are completely full. Yeah, so we've just, we added a ball valve to that. And again, going back to what I said earlier, these, uh, these I'll get on this side. <clears throat> these bulkheads, um, they completely seal off to the, the tank. And this one, there was another one up top. They both came with the tanks. It's just part of the system. Um, they've got female threads inside and outside of the tank. So this ball valve screws right into that. And then we've just got a stainless fitting here going into the uh, end of this, this flex hose. Something from the manufacturer, they specify you've got to have a flex hose coming out of the tanks. Not really sure why, but they make a big deal about it. So we put in flex hose. So that's what we've got. But yeah, definitely need a ball valve here. Something to keep in mind. You've got that flex hose on the inside with your intake screen. God forbid something happened here. If I got to replace or service, hey lizard, um, if I got to service that ball valve for whatever reason, I can pull that intake hose. And as long as it's up out of the water, I'm not intaking water. Yeah. So I've effectively shut off my supply and I can do what I need to do. So not losing 2,500 gallons yeah, in the process. Yeah, yeah, one more reason to, uh, to get that flex hose and yeah. intake screen in there. 